Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we're currently less than three months away from the Iowa caucuses, which is when the first voting in the 2024 presidential election will be taking place. It feels like the midterms were just yesterday, but still, nevertheless, we're almost 75% of the way done with Joe Brandon's term. Hopefully we can keep him a one-term president, but nonetheless, we are knocking on the door of primary season, and this is something that a lot of people are increasingly talking about. Of course, we've talked a lot about the speakership vote and the disaster that's happening there, and we're going to continue to cover that, but still wanted to take a day to make a video about how Donald Trump's lead is not just big, it's huge, and it's getting wider. And Team DeSantis is in full cope mode because they have zero way of climbing out of this. And it proves how terminally online their campaign truly is to the point where they're just grasping at straws, trying to act desperate, acting like, oh, well, this is going to help him gain support. And as a result, it's not. Donald Trump's lead is the widest lead it's ever been, even before the midterms. And there's been several polls that show Donald Trump expanding his lead over Ron DeSantis and others, DeSantis might not even be in second place nationally, and after a couple of more debates, he may continue to fall, especially as he's had one uninspiring performance after another. And not only this, Donald Trump is in a prime position to take on Joe Biden and win in the general election by a margin that a lot of people would not have ordinarily expected. The narrative against Donald Trump is collapsing in real time. It's aided by the decline of Biden, the decline of this country, and the rise of some third-party candidates. But nonetheless, it is still there. And Donald Trump is the overwhelming favorite to win the nomination, but also the general election, which we will talk about after we get to the advertisement because we have to have a word from our sponsor over at Gold Mining Inc. because China's real estate bubble's absolutely collapsing. In 08, when the subprime mortgage crisis nearly ended modern capitalism, housing was 8% of our GDP, while 25% of China's. It's an epic meltdown and just the beginning. Meanwhile, in the U.S., inflation is so high that the Fed is talking about raising interest rates, further choking the credit out of the economy completely. Everything is expensive. Gold's perfect for this environment, but it's near all-time highs already. So I want to present a company called Gold Mining Inc. trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker GLDG. The reason is that this is a company that trades at multi-year lows, extremely cheap. Their gold's only worth a dollar an ounce. So if you go to wealthresearchgroup.com slash cheap gold, there's an entire presentation explaining how the company's effectively 80 to 90% more discounted than anything out there. So if you're bullish on gold, I urge you to stop everything you're doing and download their carefully drafted report. Now the link is in the description and the pinned comment down below. But nevertheless, you know what else is down below? Ron DeSantis in the polls. And it didn't always start that way. Ron DeSantis is somebody who had a potentially, one could say, an outside shot at, at claiming the nomination from Donald Trump until people got acquainted with him and until he started to actually run for president. We heard there would be an announcement bump coming for months. It ended up being an announcement slump. And the guys lost almost half of his support, actually over half of his support, since he actually announced. He's lost half of his support since June. He was at 24%. Now he's down at 12%. He's also lost from his peak two-thirds of his support, and a lot of that support went to Donald Trump. And maybe people like to consider the idea of Ron DeSantis, but when they actually got acquainted with him and the people that were propping him up and many other factors that were going into his artificial uh, rise up in terms of the positive press he was getting in establishment conservative media, well, the DeSantis narrative completely collapsed, and it's done. Donald Trump is almost knocking on the door of 60%. In some polls, he's at 60%. In some polls, he's at 65%. And Donald Trump may very well end up getting a much higher vote share by the end of the day. And this is with him getting indicted four times. This is with him not debating 
amongst the clowns in the JV squad. They're now saying, oh, the next debate's going to be between DeSantis and Haley. You know what that's for? That's for donors to really decide, are they going to try and put whatever money they have behind somebody like DeSantis to take on Trump? Or are they going to put their money behind Haley? Either way, it's not going to matter. Trump is at 60% in the primary polls. He's never been in a better position to win the nomination. He's never been. And you can look at history. There's never been somebody who polled above 50%, let alone 60%, that lost the nomination. Face facts. This nomination is over. This is Donald Trump's party. DeSantis may have had a shot, but every single possible opportunity that he may have had ended up leading him into a self-inflicted wound because he's not built for it. He's just not. When you come for the king, you best not miss. And DeSantis missed so hard, it wasn't like even completely remotely accurate in terms of the shots that he took at Donald Trump to the point where it only caused him to lose support. And then his own support base gets angry. They're making fun of Trump supporters. They're trashing them. It's not ending well for them. It's really not. And as a result, he's down there below 13%. And in some polls, he's in single digits. We've seen multiple polls that have him in single digits. There's a poll that has him at 9%, and there's another one that has him at 8%. Nikki Haley, as awful and insufferable as she is, she's actually going to have a very good shot at coming in second place, uh, which is hilarious to see because I don't really think anybody a year ago even thought that she would dare to run, but she has. And her campaign's also embarrassing. I'm not going to let her off the hook, obviously, but still, I will say that the DeSantis people were so cocky, they were so overconfident, and it hasn't amounted to anything. And you could say, well, polls are not always accurate. Are the polls off 50 points? There's never been an instance in history where the polls are off 50 points. I hate to break it to people because they'll say, well, you're hypocritical because you accurately uh, happen to critique some polls that happen to underestimate certain demographics that turned out for Donald Trump. But even then, by that same logic that Donald Trump overperforms the polls, if the polls show Trump up by 46, very good chance he's up by 50 plus. And they will point to Iowa and they'll say it's not a national primary. Look at Iowa or New Hampshire or these other states. And it's like Trump's lead there is relatively comparable. Even in Florida, Donald Trump is beating Ron DeSantis by like 35 plus points. And that's the state that DeSantis won by 20% in 2022 to the point where it's like, yeah, Donald Trump is that guy. He's probably going to win every single primary. He's going to win every single state. He's going to get that nomination. You're going to have to deal with it. So you better just get on board sooner than later. And if you don't, you're going to aid and abet a Joe Biden victory. And we don't want that to happen. Not saying it's going to, but it's true. DeSantis and Haley, they are fighting for table scraps as we speak. It's hilarious. I'm just sitting back here. I'm laughing. I'm watching them fight because it's like you have these people, they have zero shot at getting the nomination to the point where it's just like, why is this even a thing? But the establishment, and the same thing goes for whatever chaos is taking place in the House of Representatives right now, the Republican establishment does not represent the interests of its voter base. If they did, they'd not be you know, trying to impeach and remove their own members or trying to expel their own members that have solid voting records. They wouldn't be going out there and trying to oppose an actual conservative speaker just because they may oppose aid to wars that we should have zero business being in. But that's not how these things work. They're not team players. The establishment lives in a world of their own. They don't represent the majority of the base. And this is why the Republican Party is losing. It's not because of Donald Trump. It's because there's a massive disconnect between the political class and the people that are the voter base who oppose the left, who are technically Republicans, who are everyday conservative Americans. There's a disconnect between them and the Republican Party, the donor class on many levels. And the only one that seems to really transcend that himself is Donald Trump. And that's why he's going to be the Republican nominee. And not only that, because people will say, well, he can't win. Well, he's beating Biden in the polls. 
DeSantis is not beating Biden in the polls, then they'll say, well, every single poll is faked by Trump for some reason, which is just a bunch of nonsense that every single poll would be in Donald Trump's corner, especially because these polls have underestimated Donald Trump. At best, they're correcting for their past mistakes. Uh, but either way, DeSantis is struggling and his approval rating in every single poll is below Joe Biden's, according to 538. It's also below Donald Trump's to the point where if you have to talk about electability, I think they need to look in the mirror. But either way, Trump's over Biden. And then we could talk about the swing states because there's been several polls, even from firms that happen to be very anti-Trump during his presidency underestimated him in the past, like Morning Consult. We called them Morning Compost. They're showing Trump up big in Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. They have him tied in Michigan. They do have him down in Nevada, which is kind of notorious for bad polling in either direction, to the point where it's just like, yeah, I think when you look at it, people are really underestimating Biden's unfavorability, his unpopularity, and Trump is very much the favorite right now. Things can change, but right now, Trump's the favorite to take on Biden. Because 2022, Trump wasn't on the ballot. Biden wasn't on the ballot. Democrats used the election system to their advantage in many states where you didn't see a red wave, like Michigan, for example. Republicans didn't do that. So altogether, looking at the big picture, if Republicans do what they're supposed to do come 2024, not only is Donald Trump going to be nominated, which he is, he's going to win the nomination by a lot. He's also going to go out there and possibly sweep the board in these swing states. And we hear about RFK Jr., all these third party candidates. I think they take more votes away from the center that potentially could go for Biden than they really take away from Trump. In most polling, that's what it shows. There's some outliers that show it not being the case. But especially as Donald Trump goes on offense against Biden, but also, you know, occasionally here and there taking a shot at RFK Jr., his numbers are going to drop in the polls in terms of his poll numbers for people that might be parking their vote there that could come aboard to Trump. And Trump's numbers are going to be fine. But Biden, on the other hand, is going to have a lot of problems. The more people learn about RFK Jr., they understand he's very much somebody on the left. And the more Republicans that are like iffy, they're going to come home to Trump. It's not going to impact him. We covered this in several videos. But either way, Trump's up over Biden by a lot. Trump's up over DeSantis by a lot. And hopefully the momentum continues. But his lead is currently at a new record high. He is crushing it. Absolutely doing a great job so far. So anyways, guys, hope you guys have a good weekend. Make sure you guys like this video down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.